Hello friends, welcome to my channel Netbidharthi. Friends, today I discuss about the second type of epithelial mesenchymal interaction that is the genetic specificity of induction. In the previous class, we learned about the definition of the epithelial mesenchymal interaction which is the interaction which takes place between the cells of epithelial and the mesenchymal region. As the interaction takes place between, between the cells of epithelial and the mesenchymal layer, so this type of interaction is known as epithelial mesenchymal interaction. And we also and we also discuss that the epithelial and the epithelial mesenchymal interaction is two types, which is the regional specificity of induction and the genetic specificity of induction. In the previous class, we discussed the regional specificity of induction. In, uh, in those type of interaction, the mesenchymal cell of a particular region induces the epithelial cell of the another region to form a particular structure. Uh, and this structure is related to the region from where the mesenchymal tissue is originated. As the new tissue which form during this uh, regional specificity of induction, this tissue is related to a specific region from where the mesenchymal tissue is uh, mesenchymal tissue is uh, is originated. So this type of interaction is known as regional specificity of induction. Today I discuss about the genetic specificity of induction. Genetic means in this type of interaction the involvement of the gene takes place and the induction means two types of cells are present. One function as a inducer cell and the another function as a responder cell. As this type of interaction is a type of epithelial mesenchymal interaction, so the mesenchymal so here the mesenchymal tissue function as a inducer cell and the epithelial tissue function as a responder cell and after the proper interaction a special type of structure is developed and the genetic specificity means after the uh, after the in after the proper interaction takes place between the epithelial and the mesenchymal cells a new tissue is formed from the epithelial cell and from this tissue which type of structure is formed that is regulated by the gene which is present in the epithelial cell as in this type of interaction gene plays an important role to form a particular tissue or the organ structure so this type of interaction is known as genetic specificity of induction here stated that as the genetic specificity of induction is a type of epithelial mesenchymal induction so in this type of interaction the mesenchymal cell induces the epithelial cell and the epithelial cell to form which type of structure this is regulated by the gene which is present within the epithelial cell means this is the epithelial layer or the epithelial cell and this is the mesenchymal cell after the interaction after the proper interaction between this epithelial and the mesenchymal cell the epithelial cell form a special structure And the epithelial cell to form this structure is regulated by the gene which is present in the epithelial cell as the gene involved in this in this type of interaction so this is known as the genetic specificity of induction through this experiment we understand the genetic specificity of induction in better way the experiment involving the transplantation of tissue from one species to another 
means in this experiment two species are involved one is the salamander or the newt and the another is the frog turtle in the first case the scientist took the two um, scientists took the two gastrula one from the frog and another from the newt uh, we know that the gastrula is the developmental stage of the embryo in this stage the movement of the embryonic cell takes place and from three germ layer and, uh, this is the ectoderm endoderm and uh, endoderm and the mesoderm ectoderm is the outermost layer mesoderm is the middle layer and the endoderm is the innermost layer of the embryo and from this layer the all organs of an organism is developed in this case a small part of the ectodermal portion of frog gastrula is isolated and then this isolated and this isolated ectoderm, ectodermal portion then uh, then transplanted into the into the into the ectodermal portion of the newt gastrula from where the newt mouth is formed. After the proper transplantation takes place, this gastrula form a new and the sucker is formed in the mouth portion of the newt. As this transplanted frog ectodermal portion is the responsible to form the frog mouth portion. So after the transplantation in the ectodermal in the, in the ectodermal region of the newt gastrula this transplanted uh, transplanted ectoderm the form the mouth portion of the frog so the newt with the frog tadpole saka is formed in the second cases a small part of the ectodermal ectodermal region of uh, of the newt uh, of the newt gastrula is isolated and this isolated ectoderm is then transplanted into the into the ectodermal region of the frog gastrula in the frog gastrula uh, ectodermal region of the uh, frog gastrula from where the future frog mouth is developed and then we see that, that this frog gastrula for frog that with balancer and this balancer is related to the salamander as the transplanted ectodermal region of the uh, of the newt is responsible for the formation of bala uh, balancer so the balancer is formed in the mouth region of the frog tadpole so in this experiment the salamander larva has the frog like mouth and the frog tadpole has the salamander like teeth and balancer is developed and the species specific differences in mouth part means uh, as the salamander and the frog both are the different species so their uh, so their mouth part is also different mesoderm induces ectoderm to form mouth but ectoderm respond by making the kind of mouth it know how to make means the, when the ectodermal portion of the uh, newt or the ectodermal portion of the frog is transplanted into the new uh, into the into the frog uh, into the frog gastula or, uh, or the, uh, into the frog gastula or the newt gastula then the mesoderm which is present just beneath the ectodermal region is induces uh, is induces this ectodermal portion to form the mouth to form the mouth and this uh, this mesoderm is also induces this ectoderm to form the mouth this ectodermal region has a specific gene which is responsible to form species specific structure if the origin of the transplanted ectoderm is the frog gastrula then this ectoderm also form the mouth but the mouth is look like to frog not to salamander this species specificity is determined by the gene which is present in the transplanted ectodermal cell so the mesodermal cell only induces the ectodermal cell to form what type of cell
but how this cell is made this is determined by the ectoderma cell mesenchyme may instruct the epithelium as to what set of gene to activate the responding epithelium can comply with this instruction only so as far as it genome permits means in this experiment we see that the mesenchyme cell instruct the epithelium cell to form the mouth and the epithelium cell con uh, and the epithelium cell comply this instruction and form the mouth but the species specificity of the mouth is determined by the genome which is present in the epithelium cell conclusion the structure of mouth region differ greatly between the salamander and the frog larva as the salamander and the uh, as the salamander and the frog are the different species so their mouth structure is also different normal the salamander larva has club shaped balancer beneath the mouth whereas the frog tadpole produces mucus secreting gland and sucker the frog tadpole also has a horny jaw without teeth whereas the salamander has a set of calcareous teeth in the jaw line you are understand the chimeras chimeras mean the mixture the larva resulting from the transplant or the chimeras means as the mixture of embryonic cell takes place in the embryo during this experiment as a result a chimera or the chimeric embryo is formed in this chimeric embryo the transplanted ectoderm is the part of the one species and the and the other part of the embryo is the part of the another species and from this chimeric embryo if the salamander larva is formed then the salamander larva has frog like mouth and if the frog tadpole is formed then the frog tadpole has a salamander like te teeth and the balancer in the other one the mesenchymal cell instructed the ectoderm to form a mouth but the ectoderm responded by making the only kind of mouth it knew how to make this is also discussed in the previous slide thus the instruction sent by the mesenchymal tissue can cross the species barrier means in this experiment we see that the transplanted ectodermal region which is isolated from the another species is induced by the mesenchymal tissue which is also a part of the another species as the both mesenchymal tissue and the transplanted epidermal tissue is the part of the different species despite of that the interaction takes place between the transplanted epidermal tissue and the mesenchymal tissue as the interaction takes place between the mesenchymal tissue and the transplanted epidermal tissue of the two different species so through this experiment we can say that the instruction of the mesenchymal tissue can cross the species barrier the important note is that so whereas the organ type specificity is usually controlled by mesenchyme species specificity is usually controlled by responding epithelium means that here the mesoderm induces the ectoderm to form a mouth to form a mouth but which type of mouth is formed either it is either the mouth is the frog like or the uh, salamander like this is specified by the gene which is present in the which is present in the ectodermal cell so the species specificity is so we see that the so we see that the species specificity is controlled by the responding epithelium cell i hope you understand that today's class
if you understand this class please hit the like button and subscribe my channel thank you